Hello everybody, welcome back to Cougar City Gaming. Today we have the Cougar City Podcast and we have a special guest with us, Muscle420 from our guild. Bob and Weaving, JPY, Jen are here as usual and of course me, Cougar is Bay. So thank you Muscle for joining us today in our podcast. You know, it's nice to have you here, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. And the uh, the good part is we get to to start with the best things, how the state of the game is, and what's going to happen in Update 36, some comps, how uh, things are looking. I know Jen had <laughs> some bad things about getting uh, some Templar stuff taken away from her. Jen, <laughs> you want to yeah. <laughs> talk about that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the, uh, the there wasn't obviously a lot of changing this patch, considering how heavy the last patch was, but um, obviously they, they did a couple changes to my knowledge of just Warden and Templar, and uh, the thing that um, I utilize in my toolbar as a Templar healer is the Purifying Light, uh, the other morph of Power of the Light. Uh, that's a nice skill for a healer because you can attach it to multiple targets and leave a mobile heal over time you know following those targets and a heal pool where they land um i understand that they've changed that based on a dps standpoint that they don't want people applying a you know an increased uh susceptibility dot you know like increased damage dot to multiple targets um but i don't know really like from a from a DPS standpoint, how many people had that on their toolbar anyway? Um, as the purifying morph, or sorry, the um, the heal morph instead of the damage one. So that one's kind of a disappointing uh, change. I mean, we can still use it. It's still going to apply the heal dot. It just can't be multiple targets. And to my knowledge, you can apply it to multiple targets and it will still leave the heal. It just won't leave the... Um, uh, the the main buff on it over time. So you, uh, you, if you play, if you make the mistake and apply it to multiple things at once, you're going to be switching it off from one to the other to the next instead of putting it on everything. So that one was a bit sad for me. Um, other than that, there's not too much changing um, from a healer standpoint in this patch. Oh, we're going to um, be running the, the ele elemental susceptibility or yeah, element. I'm gonna call it elemental sus. <clears throat> elemental sus. The longer, yeah, because the uh, the longer version is uh, hard to say. Uh, we basically healers were responsible for many years for applying Ellie Drain to everything as our like main debuff. It's a free cast. We stopped using it when the tooltip became um, something that the tanks were already doing. So applying breach. Um, when the tanks started getting breached to their puncture, then healers no longer needed to run it anymore. There's, there was no need for the magic of steel because people were already getting that from other sources. The only time you ever really did run it was, you know, when there's a lot of trash maybe that like you wanted to apply the, the magic of steel for, for, you know, to help with group sustain. But I really haven't used it since the, um, since the breach went to the tanks. Uh, the new change now is going to be, I believe it's a minute long, and it will apply a guaranteed burning, chilled, and concussed every six seconds. And it's still a free cast, so it's a great long dot. It's going to, you know, you can sit there and apply it to everything and just let it run. Um, it's going to be a great little extra debuff that the healers can start using in their tooltips again for, toolbars again for, um, you know, applying a, you know, group debuff to everything. Yeah, I mean, I can I can also see, um, like, in VCR, the mini tank um, taking care of that because <clears throat> it's just a little bit easier than the healers. But um, other than that, you know, I think that's... The good part about Update 36 is that there's not that many changes. So, um, Sauce has decided to actually let us have some fun playing the new meta um i know bob has been having some fun with the uh <laughs> the dummy the last couple of days bob you want to talk about that the dummy oh well <clears throat> yeah it's just you know it's uh we're back to proc sets so yeah. i mean proc sets used to be big you know a few years ago and and so 
with the changes to light attacks, um, your proc sets came to rise and empower and spin. It helps. I think it helps some some of the players that are just trying to get into vet trials. It, it helps kind of raise the floor for them a little bit. Um, you know, the the higher end DPS folks, you know, that are that have already been good at light attack weaving and keeping dots or keeping like relic went up or, or keeping your timers going, uh, you know, they didn't really see a change. They actually, they actually saw a decrease, um, which was expected. But I mean, overall, I think with the changes that they did, I mean, overall in a group scenario, I don't think you really notice the changes at all to the light attack damage. Um, I mean, you still have the high end groups clearing content uh, you know, for example, for like VCR, I mean, they're, the high end groups are still clearing it with, you know, with like one portal um, and a mini skip, you know, in like three and a half or four minutes. So obviously, that's top end, top end, top end. But yeah, but they're still <clears> doing it. They're know. still doing it. That's, that's they're the, still doing it. That's the biggest. So, thing, so. yeah, um, with the Templar, my understanding from from reading the patch notes and stuff the the power of the light change it was and or the purifying light change it was more for the kind of pvp standpoint to have somebody that was set up as a tank almost you know really tanky not a whole lot of damage and just with a couple of you know with a couple of light attacks they max out a burst damage when the thing exploded on a tune and yeah. so that's that's kind of why the change came where you can't put it on multiple multiple folks at once and um but yes jen the as far as i know the healing pool from purifying light will still detonate when you change targets and leave it on the ground so you can still use it as a heal you just don't get to build up your own damage on it for the right for the damage when it explodes um and yep. overall i you know as a dps i was using power of the light because i'm a templar kind of main um i wasn't putting it on multiple targets you know, as part of my rotation, plus I was asked to, it was, you know, one and let it explode and then reapply it somewhere else. So I don't think it's going to change the way I play per se. None. <clears throat> Jen, I mean, we, we probably will just, um, replace that with elemental sauce anyway. So. Yeah. That's probably where my elemental sauce is going. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not the worst thing. Um, the good part is I know. Um, I know JP is very excited about the Suns, uh, Brittle Den. That's going to be pretty OP this patch. I know there's been in PTS, I believe, um, and in the game, JP said that there has been other people testing stuff and getting some really good numbers with the Brittle Den. So, um, I don't know, JP, you want to talk about that? We lost JP. <laughs> no, I'm muted. Sorry, I'm muted. No. Um. So the idea of putting the Zens on a um on a warden is the fact that I mean they have just as many like dots as like the DK. I mean dive puts a dot. Um, and you use double ice staff. Um, with master, it's actually a Luca Cash like build. Is so basically what I. What I was theory crafting is if you swap out, actually, I think Whirl is better. Like in content, it's also ice damage. So basically, you would swap your Whirl out for, um, if you're looking at his build, swap your Whirl out for Rally. Put your um, Depths Jewelry and, well, actually, it doesn't matter um, because they're both light armor sets. And then you run like Zens instead of Pillar of Nurn, basically. And um, as like a, a buff set. But you use um, frost frost reach as your spammable, so that applies a dot. You also have your dive on your bar for single target, which also applies a dot, does off balance, puts the the dot on them. Um, and then you use degen flies, like you have lots of lots of uh, dot damage, and plus your trap um, to keep zens up effectively. But what it does is gives you like pretty much a hundred percent brittle uptime. And you can be more flexible with your support, like Inferno staffs. Like you can have someone do off balance. You can have a full damage, like Inferno, from somebody, 
And then, of course, the two tanks can use the two, like, ice staffs as well. So, I mean, or they could technically, um, if they didn't need, like, the, the taunt, the frost staff, like, taunt, they could run, like, infernos, too, for, like, extra damage. You can you can kind of swap around your um, your enchants and uh, your infernos by, by doing that. That's where you get, like, the flexibility with, like, the warden. Plus, if you're also comping without a warden healer... Um, such as us with a Nightblade healer, you have someone in the group to um, to do like flies and all the other warden things. You also have a flex on the back bar. Um, you can run like full damage elemental susceptibility on the back bar. They run it too because um, it's very good on them because of the chilled. When the chilled procs from it, like the the frost damage got buffed on wardens, so um, it's a really nice proc. Or you can run your. Um, you could run the cloak like as a DPS. It lasts so long, anyways, um, and just keep that up because you're already a buff DPS as your flex on the back. And you also run um, and I think I believe next patch with the changes on the warden. So like all the animal abilities, and right now they give you penetration and it's kind of doo doo. Like you're just so <laughs> like overpinned, but you're gonna get crit damage. So I haven't crunched the numbers yet. I don't even. I think you could even run without like a kilt on it probably more than likely because the warden gets an extra 10% plus 10% for our, uh, I think it's like 4% from each animal companion. So you're going to be like pretty crit cap similar to like a, a Templar. So you can have some flexibility there as well. Um, I think it's, you know, like I said, it's combining two builds and it's not like the brittle double ice staff warden. I think his parse is like 126, 128 K. I mean, it's not, it's, it's a little bit behind like DK's, in other classes, you know, Stamcrow, Nightblade, even just a little bit behind. But to add that flexibility in the group, I think a lot of people should be taking a look at it. Actually, yeah, no, I know we're nice. gonna we're gonna test it in our group because um, we have the Nightblade healer doing uh, Pillager and SPC with um, potion cooldown pots or uh, glyphs, and um, that's that's gonna basically be doing Warhorns. Like crazy. I mean, Nightblades already have really good ulti um, gain from aside, you know, from a lot of classes. They're they're high up there with that. Um, I mean, Muscle, do do you like anything in the new patch like that comes out to you and says, "Hey, like, look at me, look at this." Like anything interesting? Yeah, I think like as far as like the new patch goes. I mean, there's not a whole lot of changes, but. Uh, definitely elemental sus susceptibility is going to be really nice. Um, it's going to, I think it's going to buff the damage, maybe some of the damage that we may have lost uh, with the lost depths and high aisle and you know, just the big debacle that that was um, oh, as far as as far as damage goes. But yeah, I think it'll open up some possibilities for sure. I don't see much changing for tanking to be honest, and that's that's like basically what I do. Um, so there's that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm I'm actually very glad that I, and I think all of us are very glad that we're not gonna have to change a lot of things. Um, you know, every three months, like we were. And I mean, I understand the sauce was trying to get the game to be still, you know, fresh and all, but it's it was rough having to go three months getting you know situated, and then having to farm you know, for two, three weeks to try to get the gear and such situated. And you just didn't have enough time to, to really enjoy the character. And I really hated that um, as far as it, from a DPS point of view, from a healer point of view, like I'm actually glad they're making something um, changed. But um, I still think that they need to buff the healing a little bit it's it's not where it needs to be uh, it's, it's still rough like yeah. when you're running a set like um spc which is based on overhealing, overhealing yeah. you can really feel it this patch where you have a hard time you know getting the health bars to stay at full for a good chunk of a fight it's the the two second timers on a lot of our hots are hard to get there and with the champion points you're you're built in like Heal over times versus like burst heals. Burst heals don't really make a lot of sense for trials content. Um, 
a lot of times we're mobile the 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 burst heals are like single target or maybe two targets and you need like big group heals you need your heals over time to be not only like healing people up but keeping them full exactly i mean i i really do like the fact that um they they did you know get some stuff situated with the other classes and the other like tanks and and dps but the the healing i really wish they would have done something i don't know maybe they there's thinking that we're gods and <laughs> we could uh out heal the the top healers in the game i don't know it's from i've healed uh, a couple of times this patch not as much as you jen obviously but um it, it's it's a little bit sus a little bit sus it, you definitely need yeah the, the to, like to keep people barrier has only ever been on my front bar really for the passive yeah. where in this patch you had to use it often like it's it's something where you know there's a heal check incoming and the only way to overcome it is your barrier because your hots just don't cut it that's and that's really sad because you know it shouldn't be like that but i mean it is it is what it is um other other than that like there's not really been any huge updates to the game um i know there's like some housing updates and shenanigans but nothing too big um that we need to talk about in in this there not even in tales of tribute i, I don't think they did any cards um i don't think they debuffed or buffed any they're, cards. they're bringing in a new um patron um yeah. i haven't read too much about that and about yeah, how but it's that's gonna it, work right? so that's, yeah so um i don't believe there was many like card value changes if yeah. any i didn't hear anything about that um i haven't been playing too many cards since uh i think since our last tournament yeah um, which is tonight it's gonna be tonight. yeah so that's gonna be fun maybe bolt will win <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah maybe yeah. i'll keep the uh the the top spot in the losers bracket <laughs> <laughs> oh god it sucks poor bull has gone to the finals in the last two tournaments and just could not come come out of it <laughs> oh lord um muscle are you gonna be in there tonight in tails i have a lot of catching up to do um <laughs> i've got the x <laughs> and that's it oh lord oh lord I know JPY is probably gonna be commentating with me tonight, most likely. I don't know. We'll we'll talk about that later. And Bob doesn't play cards. He's like, yeah, we haven't seen Bob in a in a game of cards yet. He's like, fuck you guys. <laughs> I, I even, even the participation Bob, is fun. <laughs> Bob is role playing on the EU server. Yes, Bob is role playing <laughs> on the IRP, EU server. IRP, IRP is strong. <laughs> Let's go to Rift together in the EU server, guys. Like you know, and role play over there with Bob. That that will be fun. I mean, is there a lot of role players in the EU server, Bob? Like, have you come across a lot of uh, role I'm, players? I'm joking when I say I'm role playing over there. I'm just grinding. No, I know, but like sometimes you come across guess. them. <laughs> it's not any more. It's not any different than the na server i mean you go into some of these zones like the the rift is is big on the na server you go into the rift you got vampires and werewolves you know role-playing against each other <laughs> <laughs> the shrines and stuff it's pretty it's it's pretty interesting when you go into like zone chat and you read the zone chat in some of these zones. the rift after dark the yeah, rift after dark. just like cougar, yes. town, cougar city after dark <laughs> oh god no, like, dude, I I can tell you, I've I've been doing uh, my chest route in Rothgar, and there are some orcs that role play there every once in a while, <laughs> and you see them in area chat, like just in their orc voice, and I'm like, you know, I probably would be, I probably wouldn't laugh <laughs> if I was into the role playing thing but um no for a lot of people that's a big part of the game like they, they yeah, get on yeah, solely to is. like you know it is and, themselves in the lore and the in the in the races and the yeah. cities and yeah. to be honest i applaud them for for doing something different 
Um, Absolutely, yeah. It's game. a huge game. It's a great game to do it in. Yeah, I I personally wouldn't do it as much, but you know, you know who would do it? Merc. Merc would do it. Him and his war. Um, Speaking of, oh. um, you said role playing in their orc voices. That's the other change we got coming in is the um, zone chat to voice. Which is going to be oh, super yes. interesting. The text to speech, <laughs> text to speech. I think isn't text it? to speech. You know, sometimes zone <laughs> chat can be quite interesting, and sometimes people, you know, whether it be in guilds or in zones, start getting a little chirpy on each other. And if you got your like <laughs> text to voice going, you're just going to be like, "What is going on right now?" It's going to be. Le- I think it'll lead to more people like being a little trolly. I think. <laughs> And we're getting markers too, right? I think we'll yeah, 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 we're getting friendly yeah. markers. Yeah, yeah, we're getting friendly That's markers. Okay. Um, I mean, I can definitely see that Texas speech being. <laughs> oh God, mm-hmm. yeah. I, for- I forgot like, about you know, that. I forgot about coming, that. Somebody's just gonna type like a bunch of letters, and it's gonna read out like h h h h h h it's like a rave like we can have a rave in way rest guys on top of the trainers like get on top of the trainers and like have a rave like start dancing yeah Oh my god! I... So it's yeah, it's gonna be off by default, but I might turn that on for like you know a day or two just to see how that goes. And... <laughs> see what you should go. You should go like. to a couple of the role playing places like the Rift, you know, yeah. and see what happens there because I could see I could see that being a thing. And I'm wondering too, like what the voice that's reading it is gonna be like. Is there voice options? You know, can I choose like? American male, American female, British male, like like my GPS. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Can we choose muscle? Like muscle? Can you do the voiceovers from Type of Speech? <laughs> <laughs> oh, or Bob, Bob, <laughs> with, yeah. with your <laughs> Michigan New accent. New crown crates to buy voice voice packs. <laughs> oh gosh, I can do. T- to be honest, I could see what you know. I could see Zoss <laughs> doing that if if they really are like stickling for money, um, mm-hmm. to put like a Caldwell voice like yeah yeah speech. you can have like certain like yeah certain I reads reading all yeah. your chat <laughs> <laughs> um, Samuel L Jackson <laughs> God. <laughs> oh God um, or um, Morgan Freeman Morgan Freeman mm-hmm. can you imagine oh, man, Morgan I fall Freeman? asleep every day. <laughs> <laughs> I for, I totally forgot about the Texas speech. Oh my god, that yeah. that's probably gonna be bad. Yeah, um, it's gonna be super bad. I mean, it's gonna be good for <laughs> that's gonna be something that blind. I think. Like, I'm not sure why that changed. Like, yeah, the accessibility. I, don't, I, don't I guess know. like they could have always made chat bigger that? or like allow you to where you want to put it on your screen. Why? Um, are they, I wonder why they're doing that. Because I mean, I don't think like it, it would be for like blind. It's people, only right? going to be truly, and I imagine the voice is not going to read like all like the short forms well. Like the want to sells, want to buy is like it's it's going to sound weird. I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, usually you put text to speech for like blind people, um, but like I mean, do blind people play this game? I don't. I mean, that's kind of odd. Hmm. To... Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know. That's that's really probably. Weird. <clears throat> you uh, think so? It, it takes all kinds. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Like, there's at least one blind person that plays ESO. Uh, maybe more. Like how though? How do you? I mean, well, like you <clears throat> might not be fully blind. You could be like, yeah. I can't read the text because oh, it's too small. Okay, okay, okay. Gotcha, I can't gotcha. like see definition or I can't see colors. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like I guess I guess that would be that would be a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like I personally I have poor eyesight and all my like UI is at like a pretty large setting. Yeah. I mean I don't know I hide my I hide my chat HUD a lot. So if it works while my chat HUD is hidden Mm. might tell me, you know, in guild chat if somebody's trying to talk to me or whatever. Yeah, I really wish that you could hide, um, like, zone chat. Like, there, if to basically specify what to to hide. Right, and, yeah, like, I only want to hear chat from this guild today. Yeah, or I want exactly. to be, like, only at messages if people, like, whisper me. 
that yeah sauce do that please like that would be that'd nice. be great yeah because i don't want to hear like regular zone chat and all the troll that's, that's gonna go on in that <laughs> well one of my friends actually um he got suspended for a week because he started trolling in zone chat and a bunch of lgbt people got on top of him for making like i can't remember what the joke was but it was like very very harmless it was a very okay. harmless joke. It was, um, mm-hmm. I think he was looking at somebody and they were like a vampire. They got like bitten or something. And he said something about like, did you get, did you get bitten by a big boy? I, I don't know. It was, I can't remember it's exactly. It's like playful, right? It was very playful. playful. It was very yeah, playful. Yeah, took offense. And, and then somebody took offense to it. And then they yeah. just, I like, he just had the whole like LGBT people in chat just get on top of him. And apparently, I think somebody reported that incident. And when he got the email saying, hey, you've been, you know, banned for a week or so, um, he says all parties involved were banned <laughs> for a week. Wow. So I guess... They, they are, they're very, like, quick to ban these days, too, yeah. because you got to be careful, like, with what you say, both in, like, voice chat and with um, zone chat, things like that, guild chat, because... If you go against their terms of service that you didn't like, you know, you didn't mean to offend or you're just being playful, but somebody was offended, like, they'll just ban hammer you right away without even, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, looking, I was. I mean, and it's not like a perma ban or anything, but yeah, I know it's happened to people. I know people that have gone through where, like, guild gang ups, where people, you know, had an issue with somebody in, like, trader wars or like selling like auctions and stuff and got everybody to report that one person and I mean, like well, Bol- it screwed them Bolton, up like they couldn't like uh, they couldn't access their true. guild bank they couldn't access chat they like all they could do was whisper and yeah both the sideshow trolled the uh, auction the other day didn't they 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 did but they didn't okay so <laughs> people take something small and turn it into a giant hill <laughs> and basically, if you're going to hold a public auction at a main city way shrine, you got to expect that people are going to walk up and to see what's going on. And they bought stuff like they I think uh, Mars bought like 151 K worth of like motifs. Mm-hmm. And there was all of like maybe six people at this auction. And so uh, they were just like happened to be at that way shrine when it happened. <laughs> and they were queued for Cyrodiil. And they're like, all right, let's jump in on this and make bids. And like they were, you know. By the way, saying things in say chat for like bidding and having a laugh. If you're well, apparently the skill took it like right the wrong way, like, you, you, yeah. and now that you got to be careful for stuff like that because then they go and want to everybody get want it to ban everybody. Yeah, I mean the auctions that I've been to, they've always been at like um, not main city way shrines. Yeah, you generally or... take your auctions to yeah. like remote locations where there's not a lot of traffic coming through. <laughs> yeah, like there's a boat in uh, I think in Rivenspire. Mm-hmm. that people use maybe i don't know if it's from inspire i don't i can't remember. i think you're thinking of the carnarthy roost boat i think that was one that was <sighs> yeah that was there's used. there's that yeah. um i think in Bet- like you have to like get off the way shrine and like travel for yeah. a bit to get to this location like people who are just going way shrine to way shrine aren't going to stumble across you yeah they there you used know? to be some um um auctions in the in the alkir desert in one of the crafting station places the dwemer one I yeah. remember um, people doing some uh, auctions there too, but like I said, like if if you're gonna do an auction, don't don't do it in a main city way shrine. That's like cause for for yeah, and thing. then get upset when like strangers participate <laughs> and make it like a huge deal. <laughs> no problem, like, like no kidding. Um, yeah, yeah, we we heard some blowback for the next few days, and it was completely innocent. I mean, it was probably like all of like two minutes worth of interaction. But like, um, we just happened to be at that way shrine when we were like grouping up. But to to go on now, um, we got a couple of uh, guild updates to to go before we get to our next topic. Um, our new Tales Attorney tournament for November is going to be November twentieth, so that's going to be the last one before uh, the big tournament. So I think JP is going to play in the last one in <laughs> November to. I don't know. He's finally, a, he's finally, a, JP's no. gonna play cards. Uh, uh, I think he wants to commentate. I think he wants to commentate. Uh, I think he wants to commentate more than anything. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be in November twentieth, um, and 
we have the housing contest that's gonna basically be over in Halloween night. We'll have the winners announced um, probably this coming week in one of our videos, and then we will have um, the Tales of Tribute tournament winner tonight. Hopefully, Bolt is one of them. <laughs> um, I don't know. We never know. Fingers we crossed. I need him to buy me a new ESO house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> So he's your pimp daddy along with your, you know, okay, I see I see how it is. I think it's the other way around. He is so poor in game. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so that's going to be our last tournament for our big tournament. That's going to be pretty nice. And basically, that that's pretty much it, like, as far as what's going on. And you guys have been around for Christmas time. You know what's up in Christmas in, in the guild, so... We're going to have a lot of giveaways. Make some inventory and bank space now because the yeah. gifts are incoming. The gifts is going to be like an influx of gifts. We'll have another housing contest as well in December for Christmas, by the way. It's it's going to come. We'll have uh, updates on that later. And But the next, the next uh, main thing is going to be how to do for man. It's You guys are excited about this. I know that. Um, Musty, you want to start it off since you're our featured guest? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, four man. That's. I think that's a that's kind of like almost a contentious topic with a lot of the community, especially um, some of the newer players. But um, you still have to optimize um, for a four man, especially if you want to do like the good stuff. But. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I should start off with how I began my four man journey. Um, as far as that goes, I switched over to PC for a little while and I was in um, Artea's Discord uh, trading guild thing. And I met some people in there. They were looking for a tank. So I was like, cool, let's do it. And uh, went around and did a bunch of trifectas with, uh, with a couple of, they're, they're kind of uh, ESO famous now people that I ran with but um they taught me a lot and uh and then some of my console buddies asked me to come over and uh, do some four man with them that's pretty much why I came back to console um because I think four man content is probably the most interesting content in the entire game and uh and this is coming from someone who's done almost everything so far um yeah so but yeah um how to four man so honestly you have to have a good base to start with and i would say i would say you need like-minded people you need some people that you can hang out with maybe after um or do whatever like my group we do we play among us we play destiny together we raid on destiny um we do a lot of things out so like we play monopoly or we're going to be playing monopoly soon um there's there's like a lot of different things like it's you got to have that bond i guess with some people in order to really have a solid group that's going to stick around and uh people that don't mind wiping cuz there's going to be if you're pushing the harder stuff there's going to be a lot of that um but eventually you know you'll get You'll get what you need out of there. You'll get what you want. The titles, the trifectas, that type of thing. And it's a good feeling. It, um, but I would definitely suggest starting with people you like to play with. Bob <clears throat> also plays with some people who are ESO famous. Like, how did you guys start your four-man stuff, Bob? Uh, our four-man stuff was, I mean, it was literally so that... <clears throat> the person I play with could, could make the mechanic videos mm -hmm. um, to help the community out with, uh, with some of the mechanics before they go in so they can kind of understand what's going on and then formulate um, strategies and, and techniques to, to get around what, what we know is going to happen at certain, certain points in the fight. Um, and it's, and unfortunately, you know, we've, we've lost a couple people, we've had to replace a couple people. And, you know, and like Muscle said, if it, it comes down to having that solid group, if you can keep your 
group the, these four people together all the time, it it's amazing what happens because you'll you'll be playing, and like you don't even have to say anything, and you already know what that person is doing, or you already know they've seen this mechanic, and then they know what to do, and they'll, they'll just go do it. Um, so, it, it, like Muscle was saying, camaraderie is is really big, um, and just like Muscle was saying, I play other games with, with <laughs> you know, with with these folks. I play Modern Warfare too. I I've played. Um, war uh warframe i've I've played uh you know the crew too uh we've done gt uh gran turismo you know races together so um it's that camaraderie that you have to have outside of the game so you kind of become friends you know online friends and i know uh jen has started um you know she started a four man as well like we've all been part of a four man at one point in time um, Jen, like, I know you started because you, you want achievements. I know that. For sure. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. But... I am definitely about the achievements. And it, it's true. The whole, you know, getting people that you enjoy playing the game with because all three groups that you guys have are all about, you know, people being there that you want. <clears throat> so. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, like to... To clarify, too, we're talking about, like, making a organized four-man group, not just, like, queuing up for Activity Finder in your role. You want to um, get together with three other players who you enjoy spending time with and are like-minded. Have They all want to go for the same achievements. And then where I started is, like, start at the beginning. Start at, like, the base game dungeons and do your no-death. Do your speed run. Do your hard modes. Then do all three. Go to the next dungeon, rinse, repeat, um, work your way up into the DLCs. They start getting way more challenging. Um, I know, I think it was Dragon Bones introduced that you had to kill every single ad in the instance in order for your achievement to pop. So everything from Dragon Bones onwards changed for that. So you couldn't just like run through and skip stuff. Um, it's I find the challenge a lot more fun than sometimes trials because you're, you're so dependent on your three other teammates getting their job done. Where in a trials, you know, there's a little bit more flexibility in missing something or, you know, not having the greatest DPS or the burstiest heals um, or a tank that can grab something that you missed. You know, it's you're very reliant on your, your three um, dungeon friends to learn the content, learn the mechanics, grow as a group and get it done and and have people that are um, open-minded too. Like when things need to get changed that like they can take criticism, constructive criticism, say like, hey, this isn't working. Can you try doing this? Or can you play this tune? Or can you run this set? Things like that. Um, you definitely have to be flexible in a four-man. You don't have the, the all the group buffs that a 12-man provides. So you really got to pick and choose how you can optimize to do it. And yeah, there's so many great titles and things to achieve in four man. Like the, to add to your, <laughs> yeah, to add to your achievement score. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think like you kind of touched on it a little bit too, Jen, like no one really gets carried in a four man group. Everyone's accountable yeah. for their own gameplay. You can't hide and not, you know, some of the newer dungeons are pretty challenging, even from like a, a DPS perspective as far as like damage output, you know, where a lesser DPS can hide in a with the other seven DPS in their trial and you know, maybe get away with like recovering a res, but a lot of those fights it's pretty much has to be a no death at the end or in the executes pretty hard to recover. So you're accountable for your own play. And um that's that's to me that's the the best part about it. It's like puts you like on like as a DPS. I know tanks and healers are used to being on the center stage a lot. I mean, tanking there's a lot of pressure. Everyone knows when you mess up in a 12 man group, of course, because it's blatantly obvious. Uh, where DPS, most people don't really pay attention, but I think four man content from a DPS perspective, it makes you center stage as well as the other three people. Mm -hmm. So it adds, I think it makes you a better player. It adds a lot of, it adds that extra pressure and it makes like, trials seem like a breeze cake uh, in my mind yeah I'd like i mean honestly like there's not a trial in this game that like worries me but put me in some four mode <laughs> four man content or 
you know, on, a, on some of those newer hard modes. And, you know, I feel a little bit more of the stress because as a DPS, you, you're center stage just like a, a tank would be, you know, in 12 man content or a healer trying to do a Definitely. heal check or whatever. So that's the, yeah. uh, that's, that's the thing that I think, um, from a DPS perspective will make you a better player challenging yourself in that four man content. And then, you know, like muscle said, and Bob grow, being comfortable, every dungeon. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be comfortable. You'll be comfortable with the people around. So it kind of takes some of the pressure, but it also comes into play. Like you don't want to let them down either because you enjoy the people that you play with. So you, you start to push harder and you can actually like, you know, and you're comfortable. You can, you can push mechanics, you can push your burn, you can push it to the limit. Like I always like, when I'm in, in new content, I push like as hard as I can. Can I get away with this or can I not? Like I'm always like challenging myself. Like, yeah, I could sit back and play safe, but if you don't ever like realize what the ceiling is, you'll you won't reach your potential because you'll never see it. You'll just think it's right above you and you know, you have so much further to go or up the, the side of the mountain. So you should always like push it and then you can always dial back, you know, for survivability. But that that's what I find enjoyable. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, the sets, scheming with sets. Yeah, you don't have everything. I mean, you have to be super flexible. I mean, everyone has to be like super flexible. Yeah, trying to figure out what the best item is to run here based on like what you're going to expect in the dungeon, and I you think... definitely have to change it up a lot. And I think it's yeah. not just the DPS just challenging themselves. Um, I think it's it's the support too. Like yeah, what, yeah, no, what but you guys I are get... yeah. What can you guys I get are away used with? to it though? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we used to it because we had to um, from such a early on. Um, and, you know, it, it wasn't all always about <clears throat> just, you know, pure heals it, it, or pure tanking. It was always, you know, about, like, pure heals, tanking, and then, you know, some, like, what can I get away with? Like, buff and what, debuff timing. Yeah, what yeah. buff and debuffs can I get away with? Like, you know, what, what do I need in my bar space? Prioritizing that um in and doing that it's it's challenging it you know it is challenging um i don't care too much for four man but that doesn't mean that i won't do them um i I will do them it's just i don't really care much for them um just i like trials i like you know bigger stage when it comes to to things but uh i mean it you can't hide in in four man content no as a dps cannot. from the dps perspective even as a it's... healer or a tank you can't yeah. hide either. well yeah yeah in all four roles you can't <laughs> hide it's everybody hide. notices when somebody's not performing in a four man exactly like, it's and blatantly obvious it's... you're just like unless you're a portal or a mechanic dps though in a trial you're kind of just part of the crowd yeah in four man you can actually stand out like you have a stage to perform on more so than you would like in 12 man mm-hmm. like i said unless you're like you know soloing portals and like vcr or, you know doing vss hard mode portals or whatever i get that but like it's like that in every sort of content you know you're exactly. you're more accountable exactly. for your damage and staying alive and survivability so as a dps it's like it's night and day like trials are boring <laughs> i'm sorry they are i'm just like bored to death and all like trials yeah, just but, sit there and parse and like i don't even get wait excited for the next call out yeah i can't even tell you the last time my my heartbeat like went up a little bit like in the trial i mean probably after purple because we work so hard for it but i'm just saying in general but i could walk into like a newer dlc hard mode right now and i'm gonna I'm, my heart's gonna be up a little bit exactly my yeah. stress level goes through the roof in four man where it doesn't in trials that's why I like no. trifecta I, I trials can... uh, as well. Yeah, because it's. I mean, I know it's. You could still hide a little bit in uh, in some of the trifectas, but some of the harder stuff like Planeswalker and Godslayer, like you can't really hide in in that. You know. Oh yeah, when you're doing like yeah the the trifecta, you gotta like yeah, get through like, a whole trial it, with no one player dying for ex- sure. That's, exactly, that like, can be stressful. I've. Uh, I've seen people kind of hide a little bit in Immortal Redeemer and in some TTTs, but uh, when it comes to like Dawnbringer or um, you know God Slayer, Planesbreaker, you know the the new one from VDSR, like I don't think anybody can hide. I don't think you can hide people in there as as easily. Like you would have to have very very good OP groups to to hide. I don't, I don't... 
I don't think it's about hiding though. If if I could just interject, um, mm-hmm. as far as the, as far as four man goes, it's more about your skill level as a group yeah. and just and starting small and going big later. Um, I, I can say like for for my most recent trifecta in Graven Deep, um, I can say that what we did to practice for that was so lackadaisical but it, it worked for us uh, we we just went in first boss is a joke anyway on hard mode and then um the second boss we we tried to burn just straight burn and uh that didn't work the boss got so big none of us could target it so we had to come up with like a solution so we just stayed in there and wiped and wiped and wiped until we came up with a decent solution to actually clear that thing in one shot and uh and that's and after that we went in and we we tried a few more strats on the last boss hard mode wiped a few times there too, and then we just reset the thing went in and got the trifecta immediately, but it's, I think it's more. Yes, yeah, sets play a role, things like that. Um, but everyone has a job, and yep. um, as far as as far as that goes, especially in the newer hard modes. Um, you just have to have everyone on the same page, really. Um, maybe it is kind of hiding, I guess. I can see the comparison between well, trials. It, it's easier to get everyone on the same page, right? In a four-man In a group? In a four-man, yeah. yeah. There's always that one guy. I swear. The best teams have 11 great players, and then there's that one guy. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trolling right. it's I don't like trolling a bit, but, it's like, true. seriously. Like, it's true. There's always that one out. guy. JP. Why you gotta it's call you, Bob. It's, Bob, it's not you. There's you always that. It's you. It could be you. It's me. It's always, there's always that <laughs> one guy, like that, just the prima donna, like, or just doesn't want to synergize. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. You see it sometimes. I mean, not always, you but do, yeah. I know we've I all, we've all been, we've all we've been, been there. We, we have, yeah, we have absolutely. seen it in the chill team before. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. Um, not so much anymore, though. No. Um, now nowadays it's it's not as uh, like maybe we see it once in a while and I guess you know people have bad days you know but no we don't we don't see it constantly like we uh, we would before there is a couple yeah of like if you want to play in trials or in four man like the biggest thing is be team minded like yeah. it's not about You're playing you playing an MMO. Like, yeah, you you're playing be, an MMO. Go play the an team RPG. Needs, and if like the rest of the group decides that this is what is best and what they need you to do, just adapt and do it. Like, even if you don't agree with it, if the leader of the group says like, you know, I need you running this skill and you don't want to run this skill, do it. And if they're wrong, then they can change it later. They'll change it. Yeah. Like sometimes you're trying stuff. Not everything that a trial lead suggests is going to work out perfect, but you're trying to find a solution. So in order to like, you know, measure your success with a certain setup or bar setup and gear, like, you know, you have to have everyone doing it first. And then like a good, a good lead will understand like, and has the humility to say like, yeah, this isn't working. We need to switch. That's when you know Mm -hmm. you're in trouble. That's the difference. Now, if you're in the group with the guy that, the lead or girl that's not like willing to adapt or make adjustments or can't admit that they were wrong about something. Yeah. That's when you, you know, that's when things you have issues for sure. Right. And that's yeah. You know, in my opinion. And you know, if uh, it, it is, if you want to be in that kind of group, that's fine. But if you, if you want to get um, <clears throat> things done in a quicker way, that's when you should probably get out uh, or yeah. kind of start looking into possible changes in that group that could happen or you know just getting out altogether yeah <clears throat> never go into like a four man or a trial like oh i don't need gear from here or i don't need a title from here so i'm not going to try my best like yeah. it's it, you're doing it for the team if you're on a team you're on it you're doing it for the team not for yourself yeah i mean we the the way our team does things is uh, <clears throat> i know that we're we're now like um equipped like binding all the stuff from VDSR, but uh, minus the I think it's the world dagger and the world inferno staff. Um, <laughs> I gave JP my dagger a while back that I got in one of the runs, and I was like, I'm not gonna use this. Cause I'm I mean I'm Dude, gonna I never use took it. Pro. 
So, I've never taken it off. <laughs> yeah, like, I was like, I'm not going to use this. Um, I, I started thinking, I mean, I could have just told, you know, not told anybody that I had their fucking dagger and said, you know, fuck you, JP. <laughs> but I thought about my team first. I'm like, you know, if, if he has uh, the dagger... Then, uh, cause this was, this was just a pug run. This wasn't in our actual team. This is a pug run BDSR that we were in. And I, I was, I mean, I thought about my teammates first. I'm like, I know he's going to, um, perform better with this. So why not? I just give him this. I know I'm going to be an EC. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not going to use this right now. And if I do, you know, that's fine. I know that the team is going to go in there and help me get that drop. And those are the kind of teams whether it be 12 man team or four man team, those are the kind of teams that you want to be in. The ones that are going to take care of you and, you know, support each other, help each other. support each yeah. other for the betterment of the team. If you as a team need something, that team is going to help you in one way, shape or form to get it. And that's, that's, those are the kind of teams that stay together longer, um, than, than anybody. In, in the game so <clears throat> i mean there's been peeps in in our chill team that have been here from the very beginning jeff is one of them jp is one of them you know been there for the very beginning and they know they know we're gonna take care of them so it's for gear for four man dungeon whatever um be prepared to to be team oriented <laughs> that's for sure um what about gear jen like what about gear guys like what what kind of gear do you guys need to to have um you know not only for support but for like dps what what gear sets do you guys uh suggest for people to start farming to if they want to get into four man the other like gear, when... yeah, for four man isn't too different. It's you still use a lot of the same stuff you would use in uh, trials. So your healer still needs your SPC or Olo. Um, a pillager is still in, is nice in four man, um, but there is some flexible stuff you can use too. Like running a Drake's Arcasis healer is a lot of fun. It's um, pots and bashes constantly, like giving people ulti. You're wearing a heavy set. It's 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 a little bit difficult, but in four man, you're not as heal checked as in a trial. So there's, there's definitely a little more flexibility in, in using some less than like meta sets. What about you muscle and uh, Bob? What are you guys using as tanks? You can go first, Bob. Okay. Uh, I mean, it kind of depends. A lot of it depends on your class you're running. Um, well, I mean, you know, just, I'm, just I, overall, like, my, yeah. You know, like, on my Templar tank, you know, I did, because I, I don't have, a like, a lockdown like a like a DK does with Talons, I have to use, like, a, a the Sigic time, time stop bubble. So I need something that's going to yank people in for me and not CC them. So Rushing Agony is, is a nice set, but it really only works with Trash. Um, you know, your kind of your main buffs you want to have for folks, you know, if you can get them, uh, the YOLO buff, what is that? Minor, the minor courage or major courage? Yeah. I, I don't yeah. Remember. Minor. It's minor. minor. <clears throat> um, you know, that's, that's always nice to have if, if you're able to fit it into the group. Um, you know, monster sets are, are very, what does your group need? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, the magma incarnate is is uh, is nice. So like, if you don't want to wear YOLO, wear, waste a whole five piece set for for minor courage. Uh, magma incarnate can uh, get you that. Uh, you just have to proc it by by self healing yourself. Especially for four man, it works great because it works for four people. Um, and then you can work on something else. Um, I mean, like I said, it really depends on the on the class you're 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 running or which buffs you you want to bring. Um, well, I think you just or debuffs you want to bring. You just Templar tank, 
most of the time. Yeah, I, pr- yeah. I, I pretty much Templar tank. <clears throat> so um, I'm using Tormentor a lot uh, because it, um, with my explosive jump, my explosive charge, because mm-hmm. when you leap, it taunts with the Tormentor, and then the explosive charge has an AoE, so it damages things in an AoE. So essentially, it makes Templars able to AoE taunt. Um, but Muscle, I know, uses some different classes. He uses um, DKs and DKs and Sorks a little bit more. Um, so, what what are you using, Muscle, in, in some of your groups? Yeah. Um, so, it it really for me it it depends on not only what my my DPS need from me. Um, usually, that's that's kind of like my divining rod when it comes to what I'm going to wear. Lately, it's been crimson and uh, turning tie back bar with master's front bar just for that extra um, heal. When I taunt, I can just spam taunt, get a nice heal. But um, there's like like some situations I've debated on using. Um, there's a set that drops. Uh, let me see if I have it up. Actually, on the game at the moment. Um, yeah, Grave Guardian. I've been uh, kind of playing around with Grave Guardian for higher damage fights with the DPS. Um, basically, when you wear that set, you block um, your DPS. Anyone around you gets like almost four and a half thousand physical and spell resistance uh, while you're blocking, which is kind of nice. Um, could help with a little bit of high damage, like in let's say Unhallowed Grave or something like that, when you're doing the hard mode there, or even Bone Caller's Bane runs. Um, I also kind of I'll sometimes I'll put on Eternal Yokeda uh, just in case, like especially in hard modes where you get trapped as a tank and all of a sudden you have a ton of damage coming at you. Uh, that can actually save the run uh, if you have that on for that fight in particular, because when your health goes down, it'll just jump right back up. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of different sets out there that are useful, but I think um, honestly, I've been thinking about dropping Turning Tide for the most part, um, except for maybe on boss fights, just because um, Turning Tide se- it seems to be kind of pointless with a with a high damage group, um, because once I've got everything stacked, I proc Turning Tide, the ads are pretty much dead anyway. So uh, that's <laughs> I don't know. We we run we we do a lot of different switch ups and and things. Um, it's but yeah, really, what it comes down to is just communicating with your team and uh, seeing seeing what they want and what they need, and uh, going from there. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it's it, it really it really depends on your team comp, but I mean this these are good starter sets that you could potentially you know if you're thinking about starting a four man. Um, you know, start there. Start somewhere. This is a good place to start. Um, JP, what are some DPS sets that that you know you have seen um, do do well in four man? Oh, we lost JP again. <laughs> Hard JP. JP. I think what? I think Harlow. Sorry, AJP. sorry, sorry. I'm here. <laughs> no, I forgot. So, um. Obviously, like, Pillar of Nern is, like, the meat and potatoes of every DPS and like, ESO, and it has been until they nerf it. Um, it's just too much damage. Um, so, obviously, like, that's, like, basically that in X. Um, you can also change. You can swap out for, like, Azura Blight is really nice for, like, blowing up trash, especially on, like, a DK or a, a Necro with a lot of dots to proc it. Actually, Rapid Strikes on, like, a Necro is a spammable with a Zero Blade is, like, dude, you, you do, like, two Rapids because it counts as a dot and, and procs it and stacks it up, or a Templar, like, jabbing with it is really nice as well. Um, if you don't want to do that, just for some, like, cleave damage. But I also think that um, um, Whirl is, is super good. I mean, it's a like we were talking before. I mean, it's proc sets. I mean, technically, I, I you know you'll see some Kenra parses and stuff next patch, but those are dummy parses, and I don't know. I it's more or less like I don't know. You Reliquin's still good too. I feel like if I'm single targeting, you can swap. It just depends. I mean, 
I, I don't mind Reliquin on, like, an AoE class. Like, if you're playing a class that already has a ton of AoE, like a DK or something, then having that extra single target damage is, like, really nice. Um, but, I mean, it's pretty much the same. I mean, the Blight, the blight stuff is, is, is really fun to play with, I think. It procs on the same on the target too, so it's like not like a complete loss. Like, you know, once it stacks up and pops, it'll pop on the original and then do the AOE on everything else. So it's not bad. So it's not terrible on like boss fights if you're not switching in and out. And there's usually a lot of ads anyways, um, in content. I think someone should have it on in a group. Definitely for speed runs if you're trying to do trifectas because there's so much mm -hmm. trash. The quicker you kill it, the faster the less the safer you can play on bosses so i mean that's that's good to know um <clears throat> the 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 sir blight you know there that that could be a good starting point there you know if you want to start some dps you love to do some farming you know light farming obviously but um if you have you know four people together that that are there they're gonna help you farm whatever is needed so, okay. Could be a good way to get that group started too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Start getting gear farm groups together and stick together for the achievements. <laughs> no kidding, right? Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much it for for today. Unless you guys have like some other words of wisdom for the four man, um, you know, situation. I don't know um, what else other than you know like be team oriented get some gear and push yourself that's pretty much it right <laughs> make friends get, make get friends. some friends for sure yeah be social yeah i mean <clears throat> be social have have some fun and and play the game you know to to enjoy it and those uh titles you know that fist of tava that muscle just got <laughs> recently that's those titles are going to mean way more to you than um than you know if you're just doing it with somebody that you're just logging on and getting on to do that and that's you know once a week you do that that's it yeah i did it <clears throat> it creates the, yeah it creates really good memories like um i know i make a lot of videos myself of uh the things i've i've done throughout my eso play and the four man content for me is like the the meat and potatoes it's there's so much of it that you can get so much um accomplished doing it i mean i i um, did the whole like get in with people that i barely knew and such and it just wasn't as good as you know yeah. if, if i were to get into a four man with you know any of you guys um you know and even duke emp or pudding and or anybody you know in the chill team it, it's it's completely different than so the the friendship thing does make a play but um yeah everybody uh thank you guys for you know tuning in to to our podcast uh the next podcast is going to be probably towards the later part of november <clears throat> that way we'll have um the tales of tribute tournament um to announce on on here in the who's gonna be you know the lucky three people to to go and claim the last couple seats who's going to the finals yeah jp said already he doesn't wanna he's not gonna do the november so i don't know maybe he changes mm -hmm. his mind maybe we drag bob from rping <laughs> i don't know <clears throat> but thanks for coming muscle yeah thank you muscle again for mm -hmm. for coming Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Guys, like and subscribe. I'm going to leave a link in my description of uh, the next few videos to this podcast and also to your channel. So yeah. Go like and subscribe, guys. It's it's pretty going to be it's going to be a, a good thing. Um we want to get you guys the best content out there. So thanks again for watching and have a nice day, folks. <clears throat>